This is going to be a walk along Princess Boulevard and we're starting at uh, Princess Park gates which are behind us and we're walking towards the junction with Upper Parliament Street. Now on the left hand side is Princess Road, on the right hand side is Princess Avenue. Um, just before the lockdowns of 2020 work was started on this central reservation to add a cycle lane and also a pathway for pedestrians. Um, some huge improvements in the lighting and the, the line of trees and the shelters and also some new, um, shall we say, decorations, statues, that type of thing, plaques uh, have been installed and at least one has been removed. I'll go into that later. Um, on the left hand side, just off Princess Road, are a couple of um, important streets historically to Liverpool. Uh, they're known as the Welsh streets uh, because a lot of Welsh builders lived in this area when a lot of the buildings were being put up. Um, I'm going to do those in a separate video. I did some filming the same day, um, but it would be too long to do it in one. Also covers Ringo Starr's um, childhood home as well. Now when I started off from home, it was a lovely blue sky day, um, but on the way here it sort of took a bit of a nosedive because it clouded over. Um, started raining as you'll see the roads are, and the pathway is very uh, shiny with rain and there's some really dramatic skies i thought it actually suited the area um so i'm i'm pleased i did it today anyway this is princess boulevard and i uh, hope you enjoy the video Princess Park opened in 1842 and it was named after the newborn Edward, Prince of Wales. Newly born Prince of Wales, Albert Edward, also known as Bertie, was born the year before, in 1841. He would of course later become King Edward VII and he reigned from January 1901 through to May 1910. Now I'm going to take a guess that if Princess Park was named after the new prince, then so was Princess Road and Princess Avenue. The cost of building Princess Park was estimated to be met by the sale of large Georgian houses to be built in the area. The houses on Princess Road to our left and Princess Avenue to our right are all 19th century, or the older looking ones are 19th century, built in the 1800s. So these large houses would have been bought by merchants and it would have been seen as a grand avenue back in its early days. We're looking at High Park Street here and this and other streets on this side of the road are going to be included in a further video. Collectively they are known as the Welsh Streets. Just before the lockdown started in 2020, work had started on the central reservation here and Cycle lanes were installed on the left hand side as you can see and this new pathway was also built. New artwork and plaques were installed telling the story of Liverpool 8 through the years and at the far end of this boulevard the paving was also replaced. The cost of this renovation was £4 million. This walk from one end to the other is around about one kilometre which is about just over half a mile. There's so much history on this road 
that it would be impossible to fit it all into this video because it's not going to take me long enough to walk the full length. So the history in this video is going to be a little bit of a skim read. Now somewhere along this road, and I think it was on the left hand side, was a Chinese church and it was burnt down in around about 1972, 1973 and I think it was something else before it was a Chinese church, like a different denomination. But I can't quite place exactly where it was. I know it was demolished and it's probably been replaced by something new and that's more likely to be on the left side. There's the Beatles bus, probably been to Ringo Starr's old house. This is the Black Jesus, or sometimes called the Black Christ, by sculptor Arthur Dooley. When it was installed in 1969, it was quite controversial. It depicts a black Jesus leaping from his grave. The figure was restored in 2015 and replaced back on the side of the Methodist Church. What we're walking towards now is a Victorian iron lamp and it stood on a stone base and the stone base is obviously a drinking fountain. I know it's grade 2 listed, I'm not sure about the rest of the history but uh, I believe it's going to be fully restored. A um, little story I've heard, whether it's true or not, remains to be seen. When this road was first built, and probably for quite a few years after, you would have had to have been pretty rich to live here. These deceptively large houses would have been occupied by one family and I guess that they also had servants working for them but as times began to change and the lives of merchants became a little less profitable these rich families started to move out of the area and the houses were taken over by a multi-occupancy type of arrangement where instead of one family living in a whole house you would probably have three families each with a floor to themselves. It was the beginning of the decline of the area and even these families found it hard to maintain the houses and keep up a lifestyle and eventually these houses become multi-occupancy where rooms are let Certainly by the time we get to the 1950s and the 1960s, this area was predominantly occupied by black people. I've read that people who lived here during that time found it to be a very vibrant place, um, an exchange of cultures. It was a place that I used to pass through on the way to town sometimes, um, the 73 bus from Woolton to Liverpool city centre came along here and over recent years it's become one of my favourite places in Liverpool. I've spent a lot of time photographing buildings in this road and uh, I feel quite at home here. Of course this road is well known for being the epicentre of the Liverpool riots in 1981 which is really a whole different story but um, it reshaped the whole landscape of this area. So we're walking towards one of the new sculptures on this boulevard walk and it's a sculpture of L8 which is the postcode for this area and some inscriptions on the stones below. Now earlier on I mentioned the Chinese church and I have a feeling it might have been here where these new build houses are. That's only a guess though. If you know where it was, uh, drop a line in the comments below. I'd be really interested to find out. I also mentioned earlier that there was a lot of Welsh people who lived here. They were builders and uh, built a lot of houses and buildings in the city. 
and they lived in what are known as the Welsh streets which are behind the houses here on the left hand side but we're coming up to what would have been their church and it's the Welsh Presbyterian Church also jokingly known as the Welsh Cathedral it never was a cathedral but because of its grand nature and its 200 foot spire it became known as the Welsh Cathedral or the Toxteth Cathedral as grand as it was it isn't anymore after being used by the Welsh people in this area it later became a Nigerian church and when they moved out it became pretty much disused and derelict. The church was built between 1865 and 1867 and it was designed by the Audsley brothers William and George Audsley. When it was built this was the tallest building in Liverpool. This is a, a grade 2 listed building and before people start to think that um, vandals stole the roof it was actually taken down by Liverpool Council to stabilise the building. For the years there have been various ideas of how to uh, rejuvenate this building and turn it into something useful. I did hear that in 2019 uh, it received some sort of lottery funding but uh, that doesn't seem to have made any difference there's nothing really happened I believe in 2021 there was an article in the Liverpool Echo saying that a children's charity wanted to turn this church into a uh, neighbourhood hub and uh, plans had been drawn up and submitted to the council but uh, as far as I know as far as I can find out that hasn't gone any further either one thing is for certain though that if something doesn't happen with this building very very soon it's going to face demolition it's um, I would say it's <laughs> it's past saving now and there was people talking about the same thing in 2012 taking the lead off the roof has obviously let a lot of water into the building over the years and the wooden floor which um, was obviously quite ornate at the time time of being a church is pretty much rotted away and uh, that's why the keep out signs are here because you can put your foot right through the uh, the wooden floor and probably disappear up to your waist. But while there hasn't been a lack of ideas of what to do with this building, there just seems to be a lack of movement. And I guess that's down to uh, a financial problem that uh, the council may have or um, investors may have. Because I think it's going to cost a fortune to renovate this, even if it is possible at all it really is a shame it's um i don't know what to say about it to be honest anyway i'm glad i came today it's um, been overcast and it's rained and at this end of the road you can see that the um the new flooring that they've put in the new sort of tile brickwork um is really shining in the in the rain so this is basically the end of the boulevard here, uh, the central reservation, and you can see the Anglican Cathedral in the distance there. At the end of this central run, there used to be a statue of William Huskisson. The bronze statue was made in 1847, and originally it sat outside the Customs House in Canning Place in Liverpool city centre. Customs House was pretty much destroyed in the Second World War by German bombing raids. In 1954 the sculpture was moved to the location of Princess Road, Princess Avenue. During the unrest in the area in the early 1980s, I think it was 1982, the statue was pulled from its plinth because people in this area 
believed that William Huskinson used to be a slave trader. So after finding a couple of new homes, the sculpture is now located in a new housing development off Duke Street in the city centre. This plaque is about the different churches and different faiths that are in this multicultural area now. And this plaque is our life, our home, our future. This row of white buildings on our left here was recently renovated either last year or the year before and a look back at the direction from which we've worked and the Welsh Cathedral there. The Welsh Cathedral is on the Princess Road side but on the opposite side of the road, Princess Avenue, is another derelict building and this is the Merseyside Centre for the Deaf. I think it was originally called the Liverpool Centre for the Deaf and Dumb. So just before we take a look on that side of the road, this is the row of white buildings that uh, were in the other shot that I just mentioned. And we'll soon be looking at these three fine buildings as well. The Synagogue, Streetland Tower and St Margaret's Church. But first of all, let's take a look at the Liverpool School for the Deaf. This is a Grade 2 listed building, built in 1887 and designed by E. H. Banner. Initially, this building was built as a chapel for the Merseyside Deaf community. It closed in 1986, and for the next 20 years, it was used as a successful community centre for the Igbo community. I really hope I've pronounced Igbo correctly. Apologies if I haven't. Igbo people are an ethnic group of Nigerians and um, I think they're also found in places like Cameroon and Gabon and Equatorial Guinea and such like. But they had a, or probably still do, have a large presence in this area. The community group of Igbo Liverpool were proactively trying to restore the building but they couldn't afford the five million pound plus which was needed to restore it. So as we turn the corner and walk along the back of the building I can show you a photograph of what it looks like inside and uh, obviously at one time it was very ornate. And just to show you where we are down this side street, there's the Welsh Cathedral and this is the back of the Institute for the Deaf. I just think it's a shame, it's another example of a Grade 2 listed building just rotting away and doing nothing. This is a view from the end of that side street. This is obviously a later addition to the building here. So we're going to turn the corner here and head back up to Princess Avenue. This is the side of the um, synagogue, which we're going to look at next, I think. And this is the side of the Institute for the Deaf. And just coming up to the corner where we meet Princess Avenue again. This is Princess Road Synagogue and it came into existence when the Jewish community in Liverpool in the late 1860s decided to build a new synagogue. Buxtus area 
was rapidly expanding as Liverpool's traders built opulent mansions in this area. The synagogue was designed by William and George Audsley. Um, they're the same brothers who designed uh, the Welsh Presbyterian Church on the other side of the road. The synagogue was completed in September 1874 and it's widely regarded as the finest example of the Moorish revival style of synagogue architecture in the UK. This very important building is Grade 1 listed. James Lord Bowes had for several times been Vice President of Liverpool Chamber of Commerce and President of the Liverpool Art Club. In 1872 he commissioned the building of the imposing Streetland Tower, number 5 Princess Road. And the architect, you've guessed it, George Audsley. Working alone this time without his brother William. Basically because the two, James Lord Bowes and uh, George Audsley, shared a passion for Japanese art. I think now the building is uh, student accommodation. The other side of the road is the Greek Orthodox Church and you can also see the Anglican Cathedral in the background. That road there is Upper Stanhope Street. Next door to Streetlum Tower is this church, the Church of St Margaret of Antioch. This active Anglican church was built between 1868 and 1869 and it was designed by George Edmund Street. And like its next door neighbour, Streetland Tower, this building is also Grade 2 listed. So we're just going to walk a little bit further along and turn right at this rather nice looking building on the corner here and take a walk down the side of St Margaret's Church. And this is the side and the rear of St Margaret's. But further up towards the end of the road, I've no idea what these buildings are on the right hand side. Was it an old school? Looks school like to me. If you know, drop a comment in the comment section below. Back on Princess Road and we're going to take a look at our next venue which is the Greek Orthodox Church. But first I'm going to wander to the end of the road where it joins Upper Parliament Street and uh, take a left towards what used to be um, the Nat West Drive-In Bank. So this is now um, the junction of Princess Road and Upper Parliament Street and just to the right here is a memorial to Florence Nightingale. This memorial to Florence Nightingale was erected in 1913 at the central home of the Liverpool Queen Victoria District Nursing Association. Of 
quick look back at where we've walked from and to our right on Upper Parliament Street is this area here. This building has been made to commemorate what used to be here which was the Rialto Cinema. This is what the Rialto Cinema used to look like back in its heyday. It later became Swain Banks Furniture Store and I think they sold second-hand furniture but sadly it was burnt down in the 1981 riots and this photograph here shows its fire damage the tenement block behind it is on Stanhope Street or Upper Stanhope Street rather uh, which I showed you earlier in the video and uh, they've also gone now Back to modern day and we're just walking past the uh, Nat West Bank drive-in and having a look at the Greek Orthodox Church. This is the Greek Orthodox Church of St Nicholas and it's also a Grade 2 listed building and it was um, built in 1870. The architects were W and J Hay was built by Henry Sumner's and it's an enlarged version of St Theodore's which stood in Constantinople. On the 29th of January 1959 Liverpool made history by becoming the home to the first ever drive-through bank in the country. The Liverpool based Martins Bank had been planning to open a drive-through bank in March 1959 and they were really peeved that the Nat West had beat them to it. Martins had lined up a glittering ceremony for its launch and also had the transport minister lined up to officially open the bank. But sadly, the Nat West opened one a couple of months earlier. This really is a story of riches to rags. Road which was built for the rich and I guess when they built it they thought that the wealth would last forever but sadly nothing ever really does last forever but with the initiatives which are currently going on around here it looks like this is going to be a very vibrant place once again I really do hope that someone finds the initiative to turn the two derelict buildings on this road into something that is useful Buildings like this are too important to lose. Anyway, thanks once again for watching and um, we'll catch up soon.